Greetings, Marsh here, and welcome to episode 84 of my modded Factorio playthrough. While we're waiting on steel and other resources to be produced so we can finish up this setup, there are some small factory improvements we can do, so we might as well stay busy with that. And now we need to run a bunch of belts here and get all the resources in to get these started up so we can test them. But since we're waiting on those uh, belts to be built, we probably should try to find some other things to do, because as you can see, we have a huge shortage of steel right now. And it's not that we're not producing it, we're producing it basically as fast as we can. So it's kind of just a waiting game. Now, I already tried to take care of some tasks, like <laughs> building even more accumulators. I think we only have about a thousand left to go before this will be balanced with this. And I was placing more concrete and didn't quite get enough but almost got the entire base covered and after the base is covered with concrete I guess we'll just have to start uh, filling in all these little splotches of water with landfill because sooner or later we're going to want it filled in. I tried to do as much as I can with the random labor and tasks necessary but we're kind of at the point where we just have to wait for the factory to produce resources so we can continue building. So we might as well find some uh, more involved fixes in the base here. There's a couple of things we can take care of. One thing we can do is put some low level alarms on these silos here that are producing fuel for the boilers. Right now our base is pretty self-sufficient, but what happens if we run out of charcoal? Well then it'll start using carbon, but what happens if we run out of carbon? We will have no available fuel for the boilers, which would be pretty bad. So it would be nice to have a little warning system here. So let's make a constant combinator and a speaker. So we can put the light there, the combinator next to it, speaker next to that, and a power pole. And let's wire it all up. So the light, the enabled condition, is let's say charcoal is less than 100. If so, turn on the light. And we can output a red signal on that to make sure that the light turns red. We'll have global playback. Same thing, charcoal is less than 100. Play an alarm. That one sounds good. And let's do the alert as well. Charcoal warehouse is empty. Looking good. And we don't need to have a signal generator to test this. I am confident it'll work just fine. But we can copy this, kind of move it around. And put it right here. And we need to set this for carbon. There we go, noise is gone. Now we technically can put warning lights and sounds on every single depot to get an idea for when things might be going bad, but you know, that stuff kind of happens from time to time. I don't think it's critical to have alarms on everything because then we'll just have alarms going off all the time. And there is such a thing as too many alarms. If you have too many alarms, you'll subconsciously stop paying attention to the alarms if they don't mean anything. So you really only want to have alarms for pretty bad situations and running out of fuel and having the factory go dark is a pretty bad situation. So we should have alarms for that. I did want to uh, convert these to use the new station type that just uses uh, the unloaders here. And then let's pick up everything. 
Yeah, inventory is going to be full of coal. That's going to be kind of a problem. So the train is basically full on coal. So we're going to need to plop it elsewhere. You can see kind of why this uh, got put off. Because it's just a little uh, monotonous moving the contents of chests around. Let's see, these need to be properly limited. And we got to put everything back in. Looking good. Now we just got to do the same thing for the other side. And let's copy this to the other side. Okay, let's go for a ride and fix the other stops. Be a little easier just by placing our whole inventory in there. Then we can pick up more stuff at a time. And we're kind of short on belts. How fantastic. We'll just have to remember to fix that. Meanwhile, can put all that in there. And short a belt there, too. Okay, let's get the train up here so we have a ride back. How have we been doing in the intervening time? 384 belts, so we still have a ways to go there. Actually, another thing we can do while we're up here is take care of the wall because the wall has these little blind spots right here. So we need to put extra turrets next to these cannons just to make sure we don't have any of those blind spot problems anymore. Let's pick up a stack of gun turrets and leave the other ones in there for now. I don't want to consume too much steel. But also, while we're here, we can place this last little bit of concrete. So now our base is completely covered. Never mind, we don't have enough. Oh well, we'll have to come back up here. Alright, let's put these turrets to the left of the cannons. And have an inserter to fill them. And let's make a little pattern out of it. There we go, that's the northern wall finish, but the southern wall probably has the same flaw, so we gotta fix that one too. Well, it looks like we're uh, out of turrets here, so we'll have to go back and get more, but we can count how many we need. Okay, so we need 10 more. So how are the belts doing? 488. Catching up, kind of. Let's grab a couple stacks of concrete. So we can finish up the base. There we go. A nice paved base. Okay, that's one more thing off the list. One thing I would like to do is convert the drones from using fuel oil to using liquid fuel, which we have uh, more of. And I assume that it applies where p drones create pollution, but uh, liquid fuel creates less pollution than fuel oil does, so all things being equal, we should convert it. That's an interesting pipe just kind of in the middle of nowhere. 
But to change it, we have to go into the settings here. Where we have fuel consumption per meter and transport drone fuel. So we need to go into the settings while we're not in game so we can change them. And I assume that resource is just called liquid fuel as opposed to liquid fuel oil. And it looks like we have some other options here to change. Since liquid fuel is better than fuel oil, we should probably increase the fuel consumption somewhat. Let's make it twice as high. Since a drone running on uh, oil sounds really old fashioned, but running on gasoline or diesel or something like that sounds a lot more efficient. So let's set that to five. Let's reduce pollution to two five. And hopefully all of that other stuff works. So we just need to reload. All right, now that we're back in here, it looks like it works because it's asking for liquid fuel. And we have it hooked up to fuel oil, which is going to accomplish nothing. But we do need to pipe it into liquid fuel. I see. It's filling up very slowly because this is completely emptying to make fuel blocks. That's okay, we just need some overflow valves. Looks like we need three. That way, we always have a supply of at least 80%. I guess we need four. There we go. I did something similar with residual gas, because we always need residual gas to produce mineral oil, so you don't want to just use all the residual gas up, so residual gas also has an overflow valve here to make sure we always have at least 80%. There we go, now that's meaningfully getting filled up. And there might be a hiccup with the uh, drone system here, they say no fuel, because it erased all the fuel by changing the settings, so it's going to take a few trips for the drones to fix everything, but they will. I do recognize that this change is going to make it that if you use my save file to sync up the mods and use those settings and you start a new game, the drones are now going to be set to use the liquid fuel instead of fuel oil. So you won't be able to use them at the same point in the game than I did. So you'll have to uh, change those settings back to default for the drones if you want to uh, use the fuel oil on them. I don't remember what they originally set at, but they weren't set for fuel oil either. So that was a modification I had to do. How are the belts doing? 793, we're getting there. Well, this has to get to 1,000, which we're going to want, but we also need to produce these underground belts so we can finish the whole setup to begin with. So we still got some time. Well, another thing we can work on are these steel bearings and Handcrafting bearings is a little annoying because it creates steel balls. Because <laughs> when you make the balls, they don't go into a perfect ratio with the bearings, so you end up having uh, leftovers. So it would be kind of nice to not have to deal with that. Plus, it's just time-consuming making bearings. Where it's a steel plate goes in and requires 16 steel bearing balls. But you only make 12 out of one plate. So... It's just kind of lots of manufacturing steps. So we can make life a tiny bit easier by putting that on the bus here. Let's see, let's put it down here. And let's see if there's any kind of uh, ratio to this. So one assembler making bearings, and then we need to make the balls. We need 1.4, so we can put one machine on each side. So something like this. The bearings in the middle, the balls on the outside. So yellow inserters going in for steel for the balls. And the output is going to be two and a half. So four stack inserters. One, two, three, four. And to make the bearings, we need a yellow inserter going in, and then it'll be a red inserter going out. 
It's just a steel item. Right there, and then let's just make one stack. Put all that there, and toss in a light. How much steel is this going to require? Not much. Now I'm not going to worry about putting anything on the bus for now. This ought to work just fine. So let's get it in here and lined up. And where is steel? Up here. Oh man, but we don't have any underground belts. Well, but I guess we only need the yellow ones, so this will technically work. Let's see, these are kind of in the same spot here. So let's do something like this, and use up even more steel. We can throw these ball bearings in there. Looking good. That was easy enough. Another thing we can do is make some plastic pipe. That plastic pipe is actually a higher tier pipe than our bronze pipes are. See the original pipes? Copper, iron, and stone. Have a max length of 11. And bronze and steel have a max length of 15. We're using bronze because steel is much harder to come across than bronze. Plastic pipes are the tier 3 pipes that have a maximum length of 19, so they're actually even more useful. But since we're not actively producing plastic through a method where we can produce it very quickly, so like mining oil, right now it's just a byproduct of mineralized water, but we are in a situation where we have a whole bunch of plastic. About half a warehouse full. And uh, I'm fine with letting this warehouse get full. But let's say we have a dump for plastic that if it gets too full, we want to dump plastic into pipes. And then we'll just use the pipes. Just to make them disappear and put that plastic to good use without having the factory just overloaded by it. So one machine making undergrounds. And 14 making regular ones, and we're not going to bother with that. Let's just make the standard uh, three machines here. We have one machine on this side. Let's see, let's put the machines right in here. So let's make those the plastic pipes and that the underground. And let's set this to two machines since that's the limiting factor. See what kind of inserters we need. Looks like yellows all around. Except we don't want this running continuously. It's going to run a little bit, but oh well. We need to set some logic to these, so we'll do that on the inserters that are on the input side. A warehouse holds 512 stacks, and there's 100 in each stack. So that's about 50,000. So let's say if plastic is more than 45,000, enable. And since we have only 26,000, they will stay off for now. And yeah, we have a couple pipes in there, but no big deal. Once this fills up, we'll start having a nice supply of plastic pipes. So how are the drones doing? Well, that list is much shorter than it was. So those drones must be uh, catching up with the fuel delivery. I think the only real problem is just that we only have 10 drones on fuel delivery because we just don't need fuel that quickly. But since the whole system is being reset, they're working at full blast. You see, 
we're already building up liquid fuel, so we have a surplus. Okay, looks like we've finally caught up on red belts. And now we're making undergrounds. So we're just at the point where everything is caught up. I have some more ideas on fixes, but it looks like we're close enough to continue the process here of setting up our ore sorting, because I'm excited to see it in action. I'm sure you are too. So let's grab some belts. Don't want to completely nuke the assembly line here, so let's just go with uh, five stacks for now. And let's grab the undergrounds that we have made. It's also good timing because the sun just came up. Okay, now we need to pipe all the resources in here. But that's going to have to wait until the next episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.